so what i have said in my last video is uh, it does not matter how much the fed is going to increase but uh, what matters is their commentary and the commentary is quite hawkish and uh, this is not a new thing the hawkish commentary is not a new thing but uh, the way things are going or the way things are moving is actually very risky and uh, it's not about how much they are increasing it's all about the way they are increasing and market uh, it's not like down and out but uh, it is a decent amount of uh, correction consolidation that we are going to discuss in this particular video i just uh, want to <coughs> uh, uh, show you uh, one more interesting thing so interest rate uh, chart i think uh, you will see that how things have worked so uh, yeah so this is the fed fund rate okay and uh, you can clearly see how this has so it's not about uh, you know it's moving up and down but the problem here is uh, let me show you okay so <coughs> let me show you it is like do i have that yeah yeah you can see it's not about uh, how uh, what they have done but it's it's how things have moved and you can clearly see a steep rise you will clearly see an steep from 0.008 to right now it is like 3.78 and it has just happened in a matter of uh, 11 12 months so if you we generally don't calculate the percentage of percentage but the thing is if this is the kind of steep rise okay previously we have seen but it has taken from 2016 to 2019 so it has taken three years but not uh, 10 or 11 months and uh, you know what have uh, happened in from 2004 to 2007 it's like four years so uh, the fed in the past has taken a decent amount of time because uh, you know before things gone worse and we have a big financial crisis and then there is also uh, a covid crisis that has happened but these kind of steep rise will definitely uh, make something worse and uh, until and unless until and unless uh, you know fed understand it it's not like you are sitting in 1970 or 1960 the reason is we have huge amount of cash piles and huge amount of qe that has already been done so it will definitely impact the market so this is what i want to show you because this is very important because the way things are moving and if they keep on increasing 0 0.5 0 0.5 right now this is the fed uh, funds effective rate but the interest rate stand at 4.5 percent and next time when they go up by uh, 50 basis points or half a percent more the interest rate will stand at 5%. So this is going to be a huge one because you will see huge amount of money will flow back into the bond market because when you are getting a safe and sound 5% yield on uh, on the federal bond or on the treasury, you are not going to be in, uh, I mean, as far as equity market is concerned. So, and these kind of rates, uh, were not there uh, in the last uh, 12 or 14 years so after uh, such a long time if the fed continues to increase these kind of rates obviously it will be a problem so coming back to our uh, today's session how market is going to behave what i have said is definitely going to impact the market and it will create volatility until and unless fed understand the situation they were behind the curve in the past and right now they are behind the curve so if whatever they are doing they will definitely damage and i think they have certainly damaged some things market is not reacting but once that happen you will see uh, either a big damage or huge damage or you will see a big reversal from the fed as well so rather than you know uh, increasing the rates they will start sloshing the rates it's not about a neutral policy but they have to start uh, cutting the rate so this is called a policy you know policy paralysis kind of situation now talking about how the indices is going to behave so dow jones has completely uh, you can clearly see the range in between which so 
it's enter into a consolidation that is better i think this is better rather than going up and down with high volatility this is indeed better so on the downside you have 33600 and 33427 as far as the support is concerned and on the upside you have 33000 34,800, uh, 388, and 34,612. So this is the basic range, which we have to look at as far as today's trading session. Now I have been saying this one thing, and that is, uh, we are officially, <coughs> you know, uh, uh, into the month of December, and half of the December has already passed. So the volume is uh, going to be on the lower side, and you will definitely see. you will definitely see uh, low volume trades and uh, in this case volatility will sometime increase but if the overall trend is positive it will not change so generally we don't see any change in trend if it is a negative month the whole month is going to be negative if it is a positive month whole month is going to be positive if it is a consolidating month you will see consolidation for the entire month and that's what is clearly visible as far as the data is concerned and as you can see for nasdaq as well nasdaq is trading in between 10951 as your support and 10915 as your stop loss and on the upside you have 11493 and 11557 so that's what you can see as far as nasdaq is concerned and finally the spx which looks much more positive comparable to uh, uh, dow jones and uh, nasdaq it is uh, actually as uh, you can clearly see a range <coughs> so rather than a consolidating price action and uptrending range is much better okay and that's what we can see as far as spx is concerned and as far if you are looking at the price chart of spx so this is what do we have here and uh, here we are so this is what we have here as far as spx is concerned so on the downside on the downside we have 3963 which is your support and stop loss and on the upside we have a swing in between 4200 and 4370 so please don't go below 3960 as far as spx is concerned so this is an uptrending range or uh, uh, it is better compared to dow jones and nasdaq because they are in complete consolidation so this is the end of the video thanks for watching